Hi everyone, I'm Jen with Stay Posh, and today we're going to be looking at KNF Concepts lens adapter that's intended to attach Nikon G lenses to Sony Nex mounts. Specifically, we're going to be using this to connect Nikon G lenses to Sony's A7 III. And so, without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, so basically this is the breakdown of the video. We're gonna take a little bit of time and talk about lens adapters. Then I'm gonna show you the different Nikon lenses we're gonna be testing, uh, what features are gonna come up in these tests, and then we're basically just gonna go out and test them. So stick with me because first, we definitely need to talk about lens adapters. There's a bunch of lens adapters out there. And for simplification and ease of this video, I kind of want to clump them down into maybe four categories so that it's easy to understand what lens adapter we're testing today uh, and also maybe what lens adapter you might want for your projects and your camera setup. So let's get started. First category is going to be just the most simplest of lens adapters. It basically just pairs a lens to the body with no added features. And this is including an aperture ring. And so Nikon G lenses, if you're not familiar, um, are without any type of manual aperture adjustment on the actual lens themselves. And there are a lot of lenses out today that don't have actual aperture adjustments on the barrel of the lens. Um, and so for these types of lenses, you're gonna wanna just totally ignore the category one simplest lens adapter. Uh, they're not gonna allow you to adjust the aperture. And so unless you only have manual lenses, I would just kind of stay away from those. So the second category, and that's the category uh, with the AF Concepts adapter we're gonna be testing today is an adapter that attaches a lens to a body, uh, but it also has a ring for adjusting the aperture. Uh, that's going to be crucial with G-type Nikon lenses. And like I was saying before, any lens that you have that doesn't have an actual manual aperture control on the barrel. The next category kind of falls into a speed booster accelerator category. Uh, these are going to be adapters that also have glass in them. Speed boosters are really complicated. I will put a link in the bottom in the description below uh, that kind of gives a little bit of breakdown about speed boosters because honestly, I'm probably not the best to dive into that and there's so much about them I don't know. So, all right, and the last category I wanna bring up today is fully electronic adapters. And that means that all of that electronic information gets communicated through the adapter from the lens to the camera and from the camera to the lens. So for example, Nikon um, has uh, lens stability or vibration reduction features on a lot of their lenses. And so uh, if you have that in the lens without a, an adapter that has that electronic communication, you're not gonna be able to send that back to the camera. Um, you're not gonna be able to power the lens uh, via the camera. Um, without that electronic adapter, you're not going to be able to use face recognition um, on the camera and send that to the lens. There's just so many features that you're kind of letting go of if you don't want to get an electronic lens adapter. Now, they're expensive, and that's a lot of reason people don't go ahead and get them. Uh, sometimes they're unreliable, they don't work with all lenses, and Nikon specifically has been really late to the game uh, on getting with electronic lens adapters. But today's video isn't about that. It's not about electronic lens adapters. It's about this simple version, about the simplest lens adapter version you can get. Um, and it just affects the aperture. It just connects the lenses. This thing was less than $30. And that's what we're talking about today. Cheap and easy ways to be able to use some Nikon glass on Sony bodies. So let's get into it. Let's look at the different lenses we're going to be testing today. All right, so we've got our Sony A7 III body out and ready. We've got our KNF Concepts adapter. And the first lens we're going to be starting with is Nikon's 105 millimeter micro lens. This is a full frame lens, which is great because the camera is full framed, uh, but it has this vibration reduction. It has all these different features that help with doing macro shots. I'm curious to see what will happen without them. 
All right, our next lens is the Nikon DX 10 to 20 millimeter. This is a zoom lens. It's super wide and it's DX, which means it's cropped. And so we'll have to do a little setting change in our body uh, to get this lens to work properly. It is also an autofocus pulsating lens. I'm not sure how pulsating works in a manual capacity, so we're definitely going to have to see how that works. All right, and our third lens is Nikon's Fisheye 10.5 millimeter. Uh, this is a standard autofocus. It is a DX lens, so we're also going to be using that crop setting in the camera for this one. And there they all go. Woo! All right, let's take a little bit closer of a look at the Can of Concepts adapter. It comes in this plastic canteen like box. Inside, it basically just comes with the adapter and a little bit of bubble wrap. Um, taking this thing out of the bubble wrap, you can see that there's no glass inside. It just attaches to the body and to the lens. Uh, it has this ring for adjusting the aperture and that's about it. I wanted to add caps to the front and back of this to protect it from dust, but they do not come with caps. Just a heads up. So, attaching this thing, you want to line up the red dot with the white dot on the body. Same situation for attaching the lens. There's a red dot there and a white dot on your lens and you want to line those up and then twist until you hear a click. And that's how you get it on. Yeah. How to get it off. You go ahead and push that lever and that should take the lens off the adapter. And then just the same way you would take a lens off, you want to push that button to get the adapter off. All right, so let's go ahead and get our camera on. And as you'll see, there's already something that is a little wrong here. And so uh, you may notice that it's not a full picture. We've got this weird sort of shape here. Um, and that's actually me touching the plastic uh, bayonet that is part of the Nikon Fisheye DX lens. Um, take a look at it here. You can see the bayonet really well. Um, and that's what we're seeing. Typically when you have this lens on a cropped sensor camera, you're only seeing this much of the picture because the actual lens is designed for crop bodies and so it doesn't take advantage of the full sensor. This camera has a full sensor, the Sony a7 III, and so that's what this black area actually is. It's just the crop sensor that's not being utilized because the lens is made for cropped bodies and this is a full frame body. So the first thing we're going to want to do in order to take care of that issue, or if you're using this adapter to put a cropped lens on the body, you're going to want to go ahead into the menu. We're going to make sure we are on page one of the first menu here. And then down here at the APS super 35 millimeter, we're going to go in and we want to take it off auto and put it on manual. Okay. Go ahead back. And as you'll notice, we have resolved that issue. So now it is using only the cropped portion of the sensor. All right. So the next setting we're going to make sure to have on before we get to shooting is we're going to take this down to menu number 13 of the first menu, page 13 of the first menu. And we're going to want to go down to peaking settings. If this is not already on, you're going to want to make sure it's on. Um, they have options for various colors. I like to do red. Red is sort of the standard color. And that's basically letting you know what is in focus in this picture. Um, as you rotate the focus, you can tell in the actual picture it's out of focus and we're losing that red. All right, so here we have our scene set up. We've got various distances to test our aperture or rather the adapter's aperture ring. So speaking of that, let's go ahead and see what settings we're on. Here we go. We've got, uh, let's start with our smallest aperture and we're going to start with our furthest focus length and we'll just spin it to an infinity um, and we're going to do it at our uh, smallest aperture. So let's see what we get. And let's go ahead and record on here so we can see it in a little bit of playback. So as you can see, it already has red lines all over the actual lens here. Um, I'm seeing red lines show up all over 
the painting. And so we are getting indications in terms of the peaking that everything is in focus. Um, again, that peaking is so helpful when you have um, manual focus settings or you don't have auto focus ability. So let's go ahead and we're gonna spin that aperture ring back to where it's at its that line is at its biggest so now the aperture is um, this lens gets up open all the way to a 2.8 and so theoretically that's as wide as we're getting the aperture so let's go ahead and bring that down all right so what i'm seeing automatically is that the red is only in the back portion it doesn't seem to be in focus on the front here on that camera body and honestly i'm not even seeing so much red around our box there and so uh, with that shallow depth of field at an infinity focus it makes sense that we would only have the back in focus um, and as you change it, you can see it, it rotating more close to the front. So that's a great sign. It shows that this aperture ring is working for us. All right, next we are gonna do that 10 to 20 pulsating focus lens. Uh, this is also a cropped lens, so we can leave our settings as is. Uh, for this one, let's go ahead and just look through the camera. Um, you can see that it's focused really well on that lens. But right now I'm twisting the focus ring and it doesn't seem to be changing at all. Um, zooming in a little, nothing. No matter which way I turn the focus knob, it doesn't appear to change. Only the distance of the items. So right now it appears as though the focus is sort of stuck at uh, you know about eight inches or so. So kind of what this tells me is maybe the autofocus pulsating uh, doesn't work uh, if you don't have a Nikon body to read that type of data. Um, I just went ahead and changed the aperture ring and you can see uh, that more is in focus for sure, but that's only because we have a smaller aperture. Um, therefore, the depth of field is greater. It has nothing to do with my ability to actually change the focus of this. So uh, that's kind of a bummer. It's definitely not a lens that you can use this adapter to convert over to another camera. I think it's got to be a compatible Nikon. All right, the last lens we're going to be testing is that 105 millimeter micro. It is a full frame, so be sure to go back into your settings on your Sony body and switch that back uh, to auto. So just right out of the gate, we can tell that the macro focus seems to be working great. Um, it seems to work at that large scale, but what I am noticing is that without vibration reduction, uh, there is a bit of shake when you have it this close up. Uh, but good news, it seems to be working with this lens just fine. All right, and that is gonna take care of us for today. Hopefully this video helped you find an adapter to get some of that Nikon G glass on your Sony body. Um, I know that I'm personally pretty pleased with it. Uh, are there better adapters out there? Totally, you and I both know that. But for 30 bucks, this thing is hard to beat and uh, I, it's down here, that's why I keep looking at it. Uh, but this thing is hard to beat for 30 bucks. It's a great way to test out your Nikon glass, see if it's something that you wanna um, be using still. Dust it off, give it a try. Do you miss those features? Do you miss them enough to decide, yes, I like this lens and I wanna spend the extra dough to get an electronic adapter so I can use it and all its functions? This is sort of a great stepping stone, I think, to, to test that out. If you like this video, definitely hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed already, you should better subscribe now because I want to see you here every week when I do a video. It's going to be about camera gear, sometimes tutorials, and always about New Orleans because it's the place to be. I am Gemma Stepage and I will see you in the next video. Peace.